Did you realize that one of the primary goals of the devil is to get you into strife with others in the body of Christ? Jesus said that a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. On today's program, I will be sharing a message entitled, The Danger of Strife. We will look to God's word and learn how to avoid the common trap the enemy sets. I invite you to join me now. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Why do we get frustrated? Is when we start trying to fight the battle in our own strength. We start trying to take matters into our own hands. And then you move forward into the New Testament and you see Jesus and his disciples. And the Bible says in Luke 22 that there was this dispute that arose among the disciples. And here's what the dispute was about Who's the greatest? So you got these 12 disciples, and they're arguing back and forth. And, and finally, the Lord asked, what are you guys arguing about? Well, we were actually arguing who's the greatest here. And then Jesus went on to tell them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them. They exercise authority over you. And then Jesus made this profound parallel, parable, and he spoke to them. And he says this, who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who is served? So who's greater? If you have two people, one person sitting down eating, and then you have another person that's serving the person sitting down eating, who's the greater of the two? Well, the disciples go, well, obviously, the one who's sitting down eating, they're the greatest. And then Jesus threw him a real curveball. He said this, but I am among you as one who serves. In other words, I didn't come down here, sit, plot myself down, say, you guys, come on, help me out, do this, do that for me. Jesus sat, Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister. Now, you know where we get into a lot of strife? We want everybody to serve us. You realize that? I heard about this one fellow. He had a traveling ministry nationally, and he told about when he first got these invitations that churches wanted him to come and speak in their church. He was just so honored that a church would want him to come and he said, boy, I tell you, I'd just get in the plane and I'd realize this waitress said, do you want anything? Can I get you anything? Oh, yeah, great. You mean you're willing to serve me and everybody? It was just a beautiful world. He said, then after I did that for about 10 years, I plopped down in that plane and I thought, where are those, where are those people handing out peanuts? Where are those people that are supposed to bring me my pillow? Where are those people that are? He says, I noticed the longer I did it, the more unappreciative I became. We've got to realize that the more pride gets into your life, the less you want to serve. The more pride comes into your life, the more you think about what are others going to do for me rather than what can I do for other people. Love is patient and love is kind. Look up the word kindness in the original language. It, it is also translated usefulness. If you're really going to walk in love, your goal is to be useful, is to be beneficial, is to be a blessing to everybody you come in contact with. Now, think about the life of the Apostle Paul. Did he deal with strife? He said in Philippians chapter 1, he said, Some preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds. The other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Paul knew that there were some people, and their whole motive in preaching was just to stir up strife. They were super apostles. They wanted to be recognized. They wanted to, you know, have this recognition that really was, it really was more soulish than it was spiritual. And he said, some people are preaching out of strife, but some people are doing it out of sincerity. So the apostle Paul dealt with these things that not everybody's, you could couldn't take them at face value. But let me just say this. How many know we're really not the judge at the end of the day? And sometimes we see things and it may bother us and we recognize this isn't really honoring to the Lord, but at the end of the day, what you can't do is allow their strife to become your strife. 
You can't allow their wrong to become your wrong. You can't allow how they're acting to, you know, bring the worst out of you. Let it bring the best out of you. So what does the Bible teach about strife? I'm going to give you a few things today that I think will be helpful. What does the Bible teach about strife? Now, first of all, let me ask you this. If you're alive this week, you had an opportunity for strife. Now, I had a couple of men that were honest. I'm going to run that one by you again. If you're alive this week, if your pulse, if your heart was working and you were interacting with other people, you had an opportunity for strife. And so it's, it's not like what I'm preaching about. This may happen to you maybe sometime in 2020, the year 2020, this may happen to you. But so remember what I'm saying. No, I'm telling you this week, matter of fact, even maybe today, you're going to have an opportunity to use this. So here are some things that I will say about strife. Number one, the thing I want to say about strife, number one, strife will open the door to all kinds of satanic attacks. All kinds of satanic attacks. And you say, Pastor, I, you mean strife? I'm a godly person. I love Jesus. I'm saved. But notice what the Bible says in James chapter 3. It says, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above. It is earthly. It is sensual. And notice this phrase, it is devilish. So strife is devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. We had some of, some of our missionaries, Steve and Rita Andrew. You've heard me maybe tell this story, but a number of years ago, God called them, and they were in a small, mostly Muslim nation, and they were in this nation and living in a one-bedroom apartment, family of five, three children, and homeschooling. So it was a difficult environment for their family. There was a lot of bickering going on between the kids and, you know, just the adjustment to that culture and that place where they were living and the climate, a lot of different changes. And so one day, Rita Andrews tells the story how she got a little bowl out and she asked the kids to write on a piece of paper everything bad that you could think that could potentially happen in our family. And some of the kids wrote down like divorce or sickness or you know, they mentioned all the bad things that we could lose our parents or we could lose one another or we could, you know, just wrote down all the negative things that they could think could potentially happen to them. And then she put all that in a bowl. And the idea was, she said, every time you get in strife, I want you to reach in that bowl and I want you to pull something out and read it. Because whether you realize it or not, whenever we get in strife or you kids are not really in harmony with one another or walking in love with one another, you're opening the door for everything that the devil is pushing. We must decide and we must determine that we are going to walk in love, we're going to walk in unity, and we're going to shut the door on the devil. You know, in the media right now, there's these two prisoners that have broken out of prison up north, you know, and they tell the story how that these men have broken out and it's been over 24 hours and they're two convicted murderers and, you know, this, the whole town is on edge because these guys are on the prowl, basically. Well, let me tell you something, y'all. There's the devil and he's on the prowl and he's been on the prowl for thousands of years and the thing that he's looking for is just a door that is ajar when people leave a door open in their life. Ephesians 4.27 says this, neither give place to the devil. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to spirit-filled believers. He's talking to Christians. Christians, you could give place to the devil. And then he went on to say this, do not give the devil a foothold. You see, if you give the devil a foothold, he'll get a stronghold. And so you've got to not even entertain anything that the devil's doing. Don't give the devil any foothold. 2 Corinthians 2, whenever Paul talked about forgiveness, he said, lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The devil has a lot of devices, a lot of craftiness about him, and one of the devices he has is, is strife, getting you in unforgiveness, even if it appears to be legitimate. Well, you don't know my circumstance. Well, I'll tell you this, there's nothing new under the sun. And you see in the Bible, there were people that went through tremendous sense of injustice. There were tremendous things that were wrong in their life. If you've ever read, you know, about people that were incarcerated, or they were prisoners because of religious persecution. And they'll tell you that the distinction between a Christian martyr and all other martyrs in the world is this. The difference between a Christian martyr and every other martyr in the world is this, is that the Christian dies saying, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
It's not in anger, I'm gonna, we're taking this place down. No, it's not that. It's, you know what? Lord, forgive them. That is the distinction within the believer. When Stephen died, what did he say? Lord, forgive them. Into your hands I commit my spirit. There was a forgiving spirit as he passed from this life. Notice, second thing about strife is this. Strife is carnal. Now, I know people say, Pastor, I'm not carnal. I'm not carnal. Don't tell me I'm carnal. Well, I'm telling you, if you're living in strife, you're carnal. You say, Pastor, you got any Bible for that? Actually, I do. Twice in the New Testament, you see, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul said this, Are you yet carnal? For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? All these little squabbles, all this little stuff, it's carnality. What do you mean carnal? You see, Paul said there's a natural man. That means the man that's not born again. And then he said there's a spiritual man, and that's the man who's living after the Spirit of God. And then he said there's a man in the middle, and he's a carnal man. And this carnal man is a man that though he's been born again, he's not letting the inward nature dominate his life. He's letting the outer nature or the unregenerate nature dominate his life. And that man is a carnal man. The carnal, we think of carnivorous, it means fleshly. So it's a person that lives after their flesh. And you say, Pastor, I tell you, my flesh loves it when I give them a piece of my mind. Oh, pastor, I just want to get in the flesh. I want to go old covenant for like three minutes, and then I'm going to go back over to the new covenant. We're going to do a little eye for an eye, then we're going to jump back over here. You know, appeasing the flesh feels good, but for a very short time. If you sow to that nature, the Bible says of that nature, you'll reap corruption. But if you'll sow to the spirit of that spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. So guard against strife. Now, here's another time in the New Testament you see this phrase, strife. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 19 says this, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, and think about the works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. And then you jump on through the line and it says strife. I mean, right there among witchcraft and idolatry, you see this phrase strife. Guard your life against strife. In marriage, what's a marriage killer? Strife. You know, the Bible says in Malachi, the scripture says God's going to turn the heart of the father back to the children, the heart of the children back to the father. It's a picture of God bringing unity and harmony within a family unit. It's hard to build up whenever you're tearing things down. It's hard for God to build something up. And why don't we just go and apologize? It's because of pride. Well, I wasn't wrong. They come dragging in here on their knees, I'll forgive them. Well, that's not what God wants you to do. God wants you to live in the habit of forgiveness to where you forgive other people. Now, here's the third thing about strife. Number one, strife opens up the door to the devil. Number two thing about strife is strife is a carnal thing, according to the New Testament. And the third thing about strife is strife is a pride issue. Next time you get into strife, you need to check yourself on pride. And once you quit shouting, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next point here, right? <laughs> Strife is a pride issue. Proverbs 13.10 says, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Thanks for joining me today. James 3 tells us that where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Strife will open the door to the devil. It will give him a foothold and it will lead to a stronghold. Join me tomorrow as we continue this message entitled, The Danger of Strife. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.